you are about to meet a nationally renowned artist, a terrific landscape and wildlife artist, and it's going to be a red letter day for you. Please welcome Catherine Mapes Turner. Hey, Catherine. Hello, Eric. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm glad to have you here. We love uh, we love your work, and we love to see what you're going to do for us today. What's what's the plan? Well, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to invite you all into my studio here in um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm, uh, I bet you probably have a little snow there. We ha we got 24 inches of snow this weekend, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> 24 inches. Yeah, yeah. So we are. Um, we found ourselves in the middle of winter, which is a, is a, is a very beautiful time of year here. Um, it's also this particular time of year is when our migration is happening. So this morning on my walk, I heard a bunch of elk migrating and bugling. And that's one of the things that I love most about my life here in Jackson Hole is that we live right in the middle of this amazing ecosystem. And we're surrounded by wildlife and stunning, um, stunning landscape. So I feel really, really fortunate this time of year. Things really quiet down so that you can hear the heartbeat of nature, and that really informs what I do. And and you're not getting out and painting much in the winter. You're painting indoors in the winter. No, Eric. I paint indoors. I'm a delicate flower. I don't go out when it's 14 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> so so I'm going to invite everybody this time of year into my studio and there's really um i love going out and painting on, in plein air but i also love my studio time yeah. and the reason because that's when i can really slow down explore my own creativity and explore different materials and different techniques uh -huh. um i can work bigger which is also really fun to do so that's uh, that's kind of how my year goes. In the summers, I'm out in the field, and then I and then I bring those studies, I bring my photos, and I and I, and I bring them inside where it's cozy, yeah. and then I work those into bigger pieces. You're gathering source material that you can use all year long. Yeah, our that's winters cool. are long, so you need to get a lot of source material. So you're going to do something fun for us today. What's that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be really fun. So I have a pretty broad range of what I do. You mentioned I like to do landscapes. I also like to do animals, specifically wildlife and horses. I also like it to, um, I started out as a watercolor painter and sort of that, that was one of my great teachers. Watercolor was one of my great teachers. And the reason is because of two things. First of all, you, you, you have to know how to draw with watercolor, um, draw and design, because it's just, it's not, it's so unforgiving. So you can't really hide. Then the other thing that watercolor taught me is to roll with spontaneity, let the paint do its, do its thing. And then, and that really kept, keeps things fresh. Those are the watercolors we love, right? The also, ones that are really, it really makes you anticipate things further in advance. Yeah. You have to you're working backwards, right? Yep, you got to really know what you're what you're what you're set out to do. You have a have to have a plan, and then you have to be really willing to roll with whatever the paint brings. It's not watercolor is kind of like twenty twenty. It's important <laughs> that we have a plan, but you never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> Still. Still, on no. a daily basis. So watercolor is great for anybody who's a control freak. It is a good life lesson. One um, one thing I've been exploring a bunch lately is how to incorporate the things I learned in my watercolor mm -hmm. into my oil paints. And that that kind of brings up an interesting segue. I I am uh, I'm an oil painter mostly. And mm -hmm. I've decided to take up watercolor because I just can't take my paints everywhere I go. I still, I think I still prefer to paint in oil, but I do, uh, I, I, I'm i now going through that struggling process where I'm trying to learn watercolor and I'm trying to learn to let go and, and let the paint kind of do its thing. Um, so because we have this big watercolor conference coming up, uh, which is called Watercolor Live, 
what is your best advice for painters who might not necessarily think of themselves as watercolorists? What would they learn if they were to participate in something like that? You learn about um, watercolor teaches you a lot about design, values, and edges. That's what I love about painting watercolor. Um, I uh, will, and I just happen to be a real, um, I really love drawing and I see the value of drawing. And watercolor is a wonderful medium to incorporate line, drawing. Um, who doesn't love paper? The feeling of paper, the texture of paper. But what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to bring together the world of watercolor and the world of oil paint. Really? Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Oh my okay. gosh, it's going to be so much fun. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to step off, make a couple of announcements. You can get your camera set up and we'll be right back. That's going to be fun to see. Great. I, I see love every, every day we learn something new. We're, we're learning about new techniques and approaches that people have. So Catherine, we're glad you're here. I'm so excited. Thank you oh, for good. having me. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> That is Catherine Mapes Turner, and we're going to have a really interesting demo today. So thank you, Catherine. We're excited about it. My name is Eric Rhodes. I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Also, the newsletters Realism Today, Fine Art Today, Plen Air Today, and American Watercolor. So uh, we've got a lot of those that you, you can kind of rely on as places to get inspiration and, and learn about and grow in art. The newsletters are all free. They come out weekly. Uh, you can just Google them. Or the best thing to do, actually, we have a page where we have everything. And if you just go to streamlinepublishing.com and you hit uh, streamlinepublishing.com slash everything, it shows our magazines, our products, our uh, TV channel, our websites, all the companies that produce our videos, uh, marketing books, marketing blogs, uh, just all kinds of things that you might want. Just go to streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. Uh, today, we're going to be giving away a prize. A, a pair of value specs is going to go to Francis. Let's see here if I can find it. Francis Dixon from North Carolina. I don't know where, but Francis, congratulations. We're proud of you. Thank you for making a comment. Value specs will help you see your values. If you uh, want to leave a comment today, we're going to be giving away tomorrow a digital subscription to Plen Air Magazine, and you'll have a chance. Now, I should mention to you that did, uh, Plen Air Magazine, the digital edition has 20% more content. What most people do is they subscribe to the print. That way they can see the, we, we do really beautiful printing, luxury paper. You know, we have not succumbed to the idea of trying to save money to, to use cheap paper. We think art needs to be on beautiful reproduction. And so, you know, it's really, really super high quality paper. Uh, so you want that for the magazine, but the, the uh, there's always a lot of images and stories that we can't use because we don't have enough room. So we have the digital edition, which has 20% more content. Plein Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine in America at Barnes & Noble nationwide. And we're now in 278 Michaels stores. If you go to a Michaels to pick one up and they don't have it, make sure you ask for it because they need to know. It, you might be one of the stores that had it and ran out, or you might be one of the stores that never got it. So uh, be thinking about that. Uh, also want to tell you that uh, we do a podcast every week called the Plen Air Podcast. You can check that out. And we also do one called the Art Marketing Minute. And we're always answering questions. And you can email your questions in and we answer them so that it's kind of like a QA. and a I wish we could do an actual talk show where we could just put people on the air. They have to look into that somehow. Um, a great book, a great Christmas gift for yourself. If you especially are thinking about you know, uh, 2021 and how you're going to reinvent yourself and what what you uh, need to be doing to build and enhance your art career. This book, Make More Money Selling Your Art, uh, which I wrote, uh, is on Amazon or you can find it at artmarketing.com. Uh, we'd love for you to check it out. Also, check out uh, coffeewithericcom uh, and you can get the weekly Sunday coffee or any of the past two or three years of Sunday that I've uh, that I've created. Um, 
We have coming up in May, we're going to be doing the big planner convention in Colorado. It's going to be a grand, grand reunion because we're all ready to get out. We hope that we'll be able to. We have a 100% money back guarantee in the event that you cannot come or we can't have it because of Corona, uh, heaven forbid, uh, we will have to refund money, but we'll do it if we need to. We did it before and we'll do it again if we need to. Also, uh, today, uh, we have actually, we've already started selling. Uh, we posted the pricing on the website. Now uh, we have a, if, if you were one of the 350 people who applied to go on this trip for the 48 slots today, we are sending out the uh, documentation and the information. And uh, we think that trip is going to sell out pretty quickly. But if you're, if you've been on the fence about it, you've been thinking about it, go there and look now and reserve your seat. Uh, again, we only can take 48 people and uh, we're trying to figure out how could we take another a second bus load. Uh, we're trying to see if we could get possibly some hotel rooms. The big cities aren't a problem. The small cities, small villages where we're going to paint is where it becomes more of a problem. So we're working on it. But anyway, if you're thinking about it, today will be the day. Don't hesitate because uh, as soon as we put it up yesterday, somebody was checking in and somebody already reserved their seat and I don't know what's happened today. So that's going out today. The big thing that I want to tell you about is our event called Watercolor Live. It is uh, going to be a monumental event. We have some of the top watercolor artists in the world who are going to be there January 28th through 30th. We're at about 600 attendants already. If you register before the 6th of December, you can save a hundred bucks. And we've just added a couple of new, uh, new um, instructors. One is Birgit O'Connor. She's going to be there with us. And also Shuang Lee, who does incredible work. We also have Angus McEwen uh, from Scotland and Ian Stewart from, I think, from Ireland. Uh, Dan Marshall, uh, Thomas W. Schaller, uh, Andy Evenson, who you met yesterday on the show. Suni Warren, Zang, Stephen Zhang, uh, Pablo Rubin, who was on the other day from Spain, Matthew Bird will be on, uh, the great Lauren McCracken, Mario Robinson, incredible figure painter, <clears throat> Keiko Tanabe from Japan, uh, Joseph Zabukvich from, uh, from Australia, Gene Peterson, <clears throat> John Salomon, um, Brenda Swinson, Kim Machinko, uh, I mentioned Agnes already, Michael Holter, and uh, Linda Daly Baker. So that's Watercolor Live. Just go to watercolorlive.com. We got a lot going on. This just seems like incredible. And and uh, we, we, we'll con continue to do things. Um, I want to tell you just briefly today at 3 o'clock, we have a terrific video for you. Every day at 3, 3 o'clock, we do a, a, a video, a samples of some of the over 600 art instruction videos that we have produced. And this one is called Unlimited Color with a Limited Palette. This is this man's a superstar, John Potoshnik. Not easy to say or spell, but the guy is brilliant. And John is has put together a book, a companion book for this, but you can get incredible information of using basically four colors and how he gets such color ranges. He's going to be showing you some of that today. And uh, that's today at 3 p.m. You can find our videos uh, on where you're watching now, on Facebook, on YouTube. And uh, just if you just go to those Facebook or YouTube and you search Streamline Art Video, that's where you're going to find them. Also, on YouTube, I would encourage you, we're at 59,000, about to turn over the odometer to 60,000 subscribers. Uh, you can make the difference today by get us over the hump to 60,000. Uh, just go to YouTube and go to Streamline Art Video and hit subscribe. That way they'll come to you automatically. And though you can come here every day at 12 noon where I am on the on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we it's nice to uh, have it pop up on your screen so that you can, uh, you can uh, check it out in case you're not paying attention. All right. Now, I want to show you a couple of things real quickly. Our guest today is Catherine Mapes-Turner. And I want to show you some of this incredible work that she does. Uh, just uh, She's got a lot of variety in terms of her landscapes, uh, her wildlife. It's, a, it's just a very delicate touch. Really, really sensitive work. 
Just look at that beautiful work. This is my favorite this week. I love that. That's just gorgeous. And um, I, I should just mention tomorrow, our guest will be Lori McNee is going to be joining us. But right now, let's get right to our guest, Catherine Mapes Turner. All right, Catherine, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> Thank you for those kind words, Eric. That was very sweet of you. Oh, your work is beautiful. Thanks. So I'm uh, I'm going to put you on full screen so we can see what you're working on here. It looks like you, is this a, a bear, polar bear? What is it? This is a bear. Um, like I said, I, I'm really blessed to live at the on the border of Grand Teton National Park. And we love our wildlife. And this particular bear is um, is one that we know by name. We have her. She's known as a bear named Blondie. Oh my. And she's a, she's a grizzly bear. And she's um, she's she's spectacular. She's very she's got very light, light highlights in her coat. And um, but she would I, still rip your face off if you got too close. Right? Yes, especially if you got close to her cub. So uh, this is a photo that I took this spring when she came out of hibernation and the light was hitting her. It was it's, it was kind of the end of the day and it was hitting her just um, just perfectly. So I got I got really lucky. I did have a long lens. <laughs> so you got to be careful. But um, bears are Bears are amazing. They're um, they're omnivores. They're, of course, terrific mothers. Um, the, whenever I'm doing wildlife, which I'm doing more and more all the time, I'm doing I'm just really enjoying painting animals and wildlife, especially because I live where I do. I always think about the essence of that animal. And so, what's the essence of a grizzly bear? They're that what's their anatomy? What's their form like? Um, and one of the things that make a grizzly bear a grizzly bear is that they have a, a big round full face. They have a lot of contours in their face, a lot of different planes to describe and include. And that and those different planes catch the light in different ways. So it's really important to get that accurate and to have the values describe those planes and the way the light's hitting it. The other thing about a grizzly bear is that they're very, especially when just coming out of hibernation, they're really fluffy. They're, they've got a great thick coat. And so they're not, they're not sleek like a horse or a greyhound. You've got to get those edges to describe a bear coat. So a grizzly bear, one, how do you know a grizzly bear from black bear? You can't really rely on color because there's very light cinnamon black bears and there's dark grizzly bears. So one of the very distinguishing features is this big hump. And that's because a grizzly bear is an incredible digger. They dig for bugs and they dig for roots. And, um, and so when you see that big hump, that is, that's when you know you have a grizzly bear. Um, the, other, the other thing you look for are those contours in the face. Thing about grizzly bears that are really interesting is that, in addition to humans and apes, they 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 walk on their full feet. Dogs and horses have their elbow halfway up what we consider their leg, but or their their heel. But a grizzly bear walks on their heel, mm. just like we do, and just like apes do. So they have they have really neat feet. That, that are very expressive and ones that that we can relate to. Um, so I actually did a little thumbnail for this grizzly bear and included how expressive those those feet can be in the paws. All right. Got to watch out those. Um, <clears throat> and those did you do that thumbnail in watercolor? So that's what we're going to talk about today is the um, this particular this particular material. This is an oil painting on oil paint paper. So I started out as a watercolorist. So this is one of my watercolors um, of a horse of, that was born on my family's ranch just before it started to walk. It was just a couple of hours old in this in this way. But you'll see how how you can really explore and, and abstract your edges. It's really fun. This is a this is this is an oil painting, and this is an oil painting. Oh, really? It looks like watercolor. 
it looks like watercolor. <clears throat> it's all because of this, this paper. This paper that's been invented by Arches is called oil paint paper and I'm wild for it right now. And the reason is because thanks to this paper, I've been able to marry my watercolor experience and my oil paint experience. So when you showed those, those photos, Eric, so um, if you can think, remember back to those photos, the, um, the oil, the, the painting of the mountains was an oil painting, plenty oil painting. The robin was an oil mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. The cougar was a watercolor. And the hummingbird was oil. That's an oil painting. That's an oil painting. Yeah. But these all, and all, so the cougar was watercolor? Watercolor. Okay, this is oil. You got it. This is? You have to guess. I'm going to guess it's oil on water paper. It's oil. It's oil on regular, mm. uh, on canvas. Really, you get a very unique look out of that, though. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this looks to me like oil, but it's on water paper. It, that's oil on um, gesso board. Gesso, okay. And yeah. then what about this? That's oil on panel. Yeah. All right. So I'm having a I'm having a big mashup right now in my work, fun, and I'm loving fun. it. It's um. So what we're going to do today is we're going to I'm going to talk about this oil paint paper from Arches and why you should try it. And I don't get any endorsements, so um, I'm just a big fan. What are the advantages of working on oil paint paper with oils as opposed to just doing a watercolor painting? Do you want to guess? No. Okay. The advantages are for, um, first of all, you can work a lot bigger, at least for me. I live in a really dry habit. Uh, it's, it's arid here. And I get this oil paint paper in five foot wide rolls that are 10 yards long. Really? So I have a ball. I roll out this giant piece of paper and I can just go to town. Do you mount and, it on something when you decide to paint? So I'm going to talk about that because that's one of the other advantages and something I've had to really invent because it's a little paper that big is kind of, it's a, it's a thing, right? What do you do with a piece of paper that's eight? I've done eight foot tall paintings with this technique. Wow. Um, but what the, what you can do is you can, you have a really long open time when you're working with oils, it doesn't dry so fast. So you can do an eight foot long wash and it's not going to dry instantly here in Wyoming. So that's a huge advantage. The other advantage is, is that because it's oil paint and not watercolor, you can varnish it and mount it on a, on a cradle board and not put it behind glass. So this is, if you can hear, I mounted this on a, um, on a cradle board. So now it's a rigid surface. You can kind of see, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, but it has that beautiful surface of paper. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna feel a lot like painting a watercolor painting. And then I'll put about, when I'm finished with the piece, I'll put about a dozen layers of um of varnish on it and i'll float many. just so that i know that it's not gonna be it's protected i put right. okay. i just protect it like crazy okay. um and then i float frame it and you're done so it's really neat it's a really uh, it's a it's a, been a really fun thing to explore. There are a few disadvantages for your, for the oil painters in the crowd. You might not, um, it, it's gonna be very absorbent as opposed to what you're used to with a canvas, with a gessoed canvas or an oil primed canvas, especially. If it, you find that this paper is too absorbent, my recommendation would be to varnish it first before you start painting with a cry, cry Krylon, Krylon yeah. spray varnish, yeah. and that'll that'll make it a little less absorbent. I'll you know, seal it. Daniel Graves at the Florence Academy does a lot of uh, oil paintings on watercolor paper, and uh, probably because he 
wasn't aware of this, but he'll take watercolor paper and he'll varnish both sides of it. And that way you're not, it's not absorbing the moisture from the back and then he'll do his oil paintings on top of it. So very similar. That's fantastic. Yeah. You don't have to do this for some reason sized in a way that you don't have to varnish it. Um, and so it, they, the arches has made it super, super easy and, uh, ready to go. The other, let's go back to some of the advantages that, that we have working with this. Um, you have a longer open time, but you also, with we love oil paints. Why do we love oil paints? We love them because of their rich color. We love them because of their viscosity and the way that you can work wet into wet. You can, you can get really juicy with thick paint and impasto work. You can also layer. So that's you can bring all the things that you love about oil paint to this technique. Okay. Well, we're anxious to see it. We'll get started. Okay. I will tell you that we have, Catherine, we have, um, we have Egypt looking. Let's see who else we have. I've, I haven't really checked in this morning to see, but um, a lot of people across the United States. Um, Carella. I don't know where that is. Catan from Carella. New Zealand, South Africa. Wow, got a lot of people in there. Well, that's that's amazing and that's exciting. Welcome. Yeah, everybody uh, should put where you're from so we can see and also know that we're, we're going to be giving away prizes. And if this is your first time tuning in, we give away prizes every day. Northern Ontario, welcome. Alaska, so, Australia, India. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you start talking. Norway. Hey, Norway. Welcome. Egypt again. All right. So what are you doing? Okay. So here I'm, I'm working with, um, with an army's, our, our arm palette. The other thing, a little bit about studio safety I always wear a glove on my um, on the hand that I'm gonna wipe with, just because I'm gonna use a lot of solvent. I always use Gamsol for my solvent, um, just because of safety reasons. So that's an because um, I'm gonna use a lot of solvent. I'm gonna I'm gonna really think about values here. I'm gonna think about value and temperature as I'm going through the different different portions of this bear. Um, and I'm going to control a lot of that with um, the the intensity of the of the uh, is that the word I want the intensity um, the darkness lightness and the and the temperature of it I can I can thin the paint down to control that so um, I'm thinking about. I'm just going to keep. So do you have it? Is you actually have that sketched in or are you doing this freehand? Oh yeah, I did. That's, um, that's worth mentioning. Um, with this, it's important to, I always sketch it in. Um, one of the things that I'm really working on more and more now is I mean, I've been painting for 25 years professionally, and I feel like you can always work on your drawing skills. I just finished a sabbatical, a two-week sabbatical, where all I did was draw for two weeks. I drew, I drew animals from life for two weeks. Uh -huh. um, and I just found that to be so valuable to be able to draw them from life. Um you're never going to regret working on your drawing skills. Absolutely. Hello, Costa Rica, Sweden, Czechoslovakia. That's new. Welcome. Malaga, Malaga, Spain. Um, Scotland. This is fun. This is amazing. <laughs> so can you kind of tell us what you're doing? Yeah, so um, we talked about how grizzly bears 
have this amazing coat and um, I am thinking about my edges. I'm thinking about values and I'm thinking about edges. I have this drawn in, I have my reference um, and I have, I have a certain amount of time when it comes to um, how much I can, I can sort of manipulate the paint. So I'm thinking about um, how dark is it? How light is it? How warm is it? And how cool is it? And what are those edges like? And that's pretty much how I'm gonna proceed through this whole piece. Very patient hand. You know, <laughs> New York, I guess I wouldn't think by now I'd be, I'd be painting faster and I, um, I don't, I don't paint very fast. One of the, um, one of the advice I got from Scott Burdick is never work faster than you can be accurate. Right. You can lose control. Yeah. It's like driving a car at high speeds. Yeah, exactly. And when you're painting animals or people, um, because of how much we, how important it is to rely on accuracy, it's really important to take a deep breath, slow down and get it right. Take the time to get it right. I have to mention this. This is so funny. Barbara Tapp is sitting in a dentist chair having dental work done, and she's watching this. She said, what a great distraction. <laughs> oh, Barbara, I'm so glad we could distract you today. Think about, think about painting, the fun of painting. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're thinking about you. <laughs> So I'm just kind of pulling the paint with me as I go. So you're painting really, really thin. I'm painting so thin. Yeah, because I can always go in later and um, that's one of the one of the things that watercolor taught me is um, these thin washes. And I love doing that. I love bringing in um, layers. So are you that, using a watercolor brush or are you using it? What, what are you using? I'm using, of course, we just adore our, um, our rosemary brushes. I, she invented a brush that changed my painting and those are these Comer brushes. What are they called? Comer? Comer. Yeah. A comb? Yep. And what she's done, I'll try and show you. Um, let's see, where's my camera here? Yeah. She's put <laughs> just a few. Everything's um, backwards, yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 you can get such a soft, soft touch with so it. It looks like it's kind of cut out and it's. Yeah, what out. she's done is she's put a bunch of, um, she fills the ferrule with, with fibers and hairs, and then she combs half of them back. I see. So it's, it's just a super delicate. Um, and I'm almost using exclusively comber brushes now because mm -hmm. of how sensitive you can get. Yeah, perfect for that. Yeah, if I go in later and I get, I, I put in um, thicker paint, I'll use different brushes. But for this, there's nothing better. Oh my gosh, changed my painting when I found these brushes. It's, you barely touch the canvas. You barely, it, um, it's just like a whisper, the paint. Somebody asked, why don't you use water-based oils? You know, I, that's an, that's a really excellent question. And I will confess, I've never once tried water-based oils. Well, I tried them once and they, and they felt gummy to me, but um, maybe they've come they've come a long way since then. Well, it depends. I, I think it's, it, the brands are different. Some of the brands use a soap as an emulsifier and that tends to get gummy. Some use other things as an emulsifier, but, um, and, and also 
they can get gummy if you use too much water. They have special medium for them. I think like anything else, it's just a matter of, of knowing how to use them. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, our demo tomorrow will be on water-based oils with Lori McNee. So maybe we'll learn about that tomorrow. Oh, perfect. That would be good. Do you have a um, brush in your mouth? Is that what you do? I know. Not, manufacturers not. tell you not to do that. You know? <laughs> See, this is the problem with having you guys watch me paint. <laughs> Yeah, no pressure painting in front of many I mean, thousands of people. By the yeah. time this, by the time the week is over, you'll have 10, 11,000 viewers have watched it. Well, it's it's very exciting to think about meeting new people. I want to invite everybody to my website. Please sign up for my newsletter there because I'd love to stay in touch. Um, I'll put it up on screen so everybody can see it. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, you can see a lot more pieces on my website with this technique. Um, you, you also have some prints available, don't you? I do. This particular um, this particular medium lends itself to some beautiful giclés. We make really small editions of fifty, so there it's a it's a small edition, and you can't you can't tell the difference between an original and a, and um, these clays and we're going to roll out a whole new selection really soon. So you don't want to miss out on that. I, I really like the delicate, um, strokes you're getting in there. Oh, really thanks. I'm glad you can beautiful. see them. I wanted to get everybody close enough. I would have never, uh, just looking at that, I would have never guessed it was oil. I know I fool a lot of people, yeah. Eric. Um, my, I have a gallery in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and if you're ever in town, please come by and see me. These, they're really fun to see in person because some of them are quite large, you know. And is so it to your see own them, gallery, or is it someone else's? It's my own gallery. It's called Turner Fine Art. Okay. And these, they're impressive to see in person because of their size. You know, they're eight feet tall, so um seeing them in person and and you can't tell i people come in and they don't know what they're looking at they don't know if they're looking at a giant watercolor or what they can't i'll tell you another thing that i've had just, eric that i've been having so much fun with is using this technique or using this paper with oil stick oh, so yeah. that feels like to me, it feels like rolling out a giant piece of paper and playing with a huge crayon. And so I've been doing these drawings with oil stick, adding solvent and dissolving some of the lines and some of the areas into a wash. So you get line and wash. And I do animals with these big giant drawings of animals on this paper. Uh, oil sticks are wonderful. We have a video out that um, Rose Franson just did, and she's using a lot of oil sticks in it. And I just tried them. I bought some about a year ago, but I just tried them on a painting I'm working on now, and they were so much fun. And you get these these random marks that you can't get with a paintbrush, which I really love. I'll take a little break, and I'll show everybody just in case. I don't know what we're talking about, but... Um... Here's an oil stick. That's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. So you just, um, you can take a little break here. This is from Shiva. Uh -huh. Shiva. These are Sennelier. Uh -huh. So these have a paper wrapper that you can unwrap as you go down. I like these because you can take the whole, you can take the whole case off. And then all of a sudden, you got this big chunk of oil paint in your hand that yeah. you can just go to town with. <laughs> so that's really, it works out really great on this paper and I'll show everybody what I'm talking about. So here's, here's a, just a piece of scrap yeah. paper. Um, this is sometimes you got to charge it a little bit, but here's a, here's that oil stick paper and then you can take some solvent nice and dissolve it into a wash 
And yet you're maintaining some of the line. Yeah, very cool. It's cool. If everybody, well, if I, um, if I haven't convinced you yet to try this, I'm working hard to do just that. Well, you're going to create a bunch of competition for yourself if everybody starts doing what you're doing. Well, you know what I found, and this is all what you've uh, what you've created here, um, Eric. Is that it's one big family, and we're all here to just learn from one another and share. And um, you encourage that sense of generosity with what you're doing. I really appreciate it. You've created such a community. Um, I don't know when you sleep. Uh, sleep is overrated. <laughs> sleep is for the dead. <laughs> you sleep when you're dead. That's uh, that's what I used to say in college, which I'm not sure always worked. Um, but I it's really, really nice soft edges on that. That's what I like. I like to just have there be the edge is just like a whisper. A whisper. Mm -hmm. I like that. So I don't know what OSHA would say about this, but I've put this Gamsol in a spray bottle. And I'm careful with it, but I uh, there's you can also add the solvent that way. I would wear a mask if I were I doing that. I think that's probably the better way to do it. So, but see what that does. Do you oh, see yeah. this? Oh this yeah, you really right here? Yeah, beautiful. This is fun. <laughs> You're learning like something it. new every day. Good. I'm so glad. I'm. I'm. Uh, so, I'm will just, you like watercolor? You'll leave your lights light, like you have in the face, where you're just kind of letting the paper do the work for the lights. Yeah, I really love. I I, I love the texture of this paper and the white of the, and the white of the paper. And that's. I always have loved that in watercolor too. All right. So I'm going to ask you a, just a really blunt question. Yeah. Since you're since you're using oils and and going for a watercolor look why not just use watercolor that's a that's a great question and um the 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 truth of the matter is is that where i live there's a there's real limits to watercolor um because it just dries so fast i see yeah. we're in a really really dry climate here and I would not be able to work that edge as long as I'm working it. Um, the other thing is, is that I don't love having to put my watercolors behind glass. Um, especially when you're working that big and you yeah. work, you know, yeah. it becomes expensive. It's hard to ship. Well, a lot so, of people are not putting it behind glass now. Watercolors. They're coating it and so on. They're putting watercolors not behind glass. Yeah, some are, some are, and some are varnishing and so on. Yeah. The thing is that's nice about this is that um, once it dries, it's really durable. So you yeah. don't have to worry about, you can varnish it, you can get it wet. Um, they're not, they're just not as fragile as a watercolor. I will, Eric, I will always paint watercolor. It's been, it's my first love. But um, this is this has a lot of possibilities and a lot of a, a lot of benefits that watercolor um, that water has watercolor has its limitations. The other advice I was given to by uh, my my first teacher Skip Whitcomb is to use lots of paint. What a great teacher. He's such a great teacher. I was fortunate to start working with him when I was in high school. And it was really, just, yeah, I know, I just. I thought he was in Colorado. Is that where you went to high school? Um, no, he came to, ja he would come to Jackson and teach um, because it's such a 
It's such a great place to paint plein air. Um, and I just got lucky to meet him when he was teaching here. And then I would go down to Colorado and study with him. He's brilliant. Later on. Hey, welcome New Zealand and South Africa. We're glad you're here today. One big happy family of artists. That's what we are. <laughs> How many layers until you're done? Isn't that the age old question? How do we know when we're done? Well, do you do a lot of layers of this or will you kind of? Um, I, yeah, I'd like to. I'm, I am known, I, I do so many layers with my work. Um, Would you quickly show your palette again? Some people who tuned in late didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah, I like using an arm palette because that um, that gives me the, the ability to step back yeah. and look at my work. I don't, I'm not stuck at a tabaret. Yeah. And it builds muscle. Give you guns like these. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I want to really encourage folks um, to do, and this is another another teacher of mine, John Felsing, is um, always encouraging me to have a, a, use a mirror. And I have um, I use two different ways of using a mirror. I have one of these handheld mirrors, um, and what that does is just really is a great way to check your values, check your composition. Then I also have a mirror installed on the opposite wall of my studio from yep. where my easel is. And it's a big, uh, it's a big 30 by 40 mirror. So, so those are the two things I always have with me I, is my palette in one hand and my mirror in the other. And I'm just kind of always going back and forth, checking things as I go along. It's like having a it's like having a mentor, a teacher, a, 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 a wise voice. That mirror can, can really show you a lot of things along the way. You can really, this, that brush is really giving you that, that sense of fluffy fur too. Yeah, this is a, that's it. There's another Comer brush. This isn't a rosemary brush, but um, edges are, they're so important to me and they're so fun to work on, in my opinion. This is always fun. I love my job to get to do this and watch people every day and, and ask questions. What are you working on with your your painting right now, Eric? What it what is it that? Well, when I was up in at Fall Color Week, um, a gallery owner came up to visit one of the other artists, and and of course at Fall Color Week we all lay out our our work from the week, and um, surprisingly he said uh, he liked my work and he wanted me in his gallery, so. I, uh, I got invited into yet another gallery and then uh, another uh, person who was up there also invited me into their gallery. So now I'm, uh, I'm trying to come up with enough time to, you talk about never sleeping. I'm in here till midnight every night painting and uh, trying to get some things into them. So they have some, some work for Christmas, get a little extra Christmas money. Congratulations. That's great. So what, what are you working on now? What's the painting? What's the subject of the painting you're working well, on? Well, I'm working on landscapes uh, right now. I, um, I, just, I finished up a couple of pieces I had here and then I'm, uh, I'm working on a 30 by 40 uh, landscape uh, and it's almost done. And then I, it's a, basically a fall color scene that I'm using a plein air study as a, as a, uh, you know, to guide me. And uh, I don't typically use photographs anymore. I've gotten to the point where I can't paint from photos anymore. I have to paint from studies, but I have hundreds of them around here that I need to do paintings from. So not a problem. That's fantastic. That is really, congratulations. It's fun. 
thankfully I don't have to make my living as an artist. I might starve. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I don't know what else I would do. Who would hire me? <laughs> no. I have that problem. That's why I work for myself. <laughs> Nobody would, would want me. So now I'm just, um, I just keep thinking about values and temperature. And for this particular bear i really i am enjoying the play of warm and cool um the 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 color gray is um i'm i'm making this with a lot of um burnt umber and french ultramarine blue and then some um some burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. So just kind of playing with with all the possibilities that are all the ranges that are that are available with just those three colors. I also have some um, yellow ochre and and then the white of the paper and the and it's a it's, so that's a super limited palette for this particular piece. Um but I I I the you know the benefit of Limited palette, of course, is then you have a harmonious piece, a uh, painting, and I think that those are the paintings that I love the most. The kind of the tonal. In spite of the fact that I know that, I just, I'm just so seduced by color. I just keep buying color. <laughs> <laughs> it is the candy shop. You go um, into the. Williamsburg sent out some samples to people who were um, part of Realism Live and. Uh, so I just got some, some new colors that I'm trying. It's like, oh, I love this. It's so much fun. It is. Color is so fun, which is but, why. But you have to be careful about harmony. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's why we paint. I believe painters ultimately go to painting because we love color. We need to remember how important drawing is, design. But the original seduction, I think, is color. Yeah. I think it's interesting to watch your brush strokes because sometimes you actually use your paintbrush like a rubber stamp, and then sometimes you use it like a paintbrush. <laughs> you know, um, where, like when you were putting in that edge, you just kind of, you, you just laid it in with no, no stroke. Yeah, and that's because I really, I love what the brush will do for me that way. You can... Uh, you can get this illusion of hair. Um, another really special teacher of mine was um, Ned Jacob. Do you know Ned, Ned Jacob's work? Oh, yeah. I have his book, as a matter of fact. It's very hard to get. Well, I was really, really fortunate very early on to be able to study painting the horse with him. And he, uh, when we're, when you're when painting and drawing the horse, you think a lot about the direction of the way the hair grows, because that'll, that'll affect how the light hits it, the sheen, the, um, so when I'm painting animals, I always think about that, which direction is the hair growing? And that is oftentimes the, um, the way, the way that I drive my brush or hold my brush is the direction that the hair is growing in. And that relates to really what painting is all about, I think. And that is um, painting is, is drawing with paint as opposed to an, another instrument. So, um, here I'm I'm working a lot with big shapes for sure but I'm also thinking about um dr the draw drawing this this figure this form and how can I draw it how can I draw the um this particular you can see with this photo look at the patterns in the form that the fur makes. 
see the lines that they yeah, have the pattern, patterns in the fur yeah look at the center of the bear look at how those wonderful the different yeah. patterns that it that, that, that it holds and i'm not a photorealist so i'm not going to paint every hair on this bear but i'm always trying to capture the essence of it mm -hmm. and in and of itself it's a beautiful abstracted absolutely kind of thing that going on there what an inspiration it can be well i'm gonna have to pull the plug on you Catherine. We're just getting started. Our bear only has two legs, Eric. Yeah, well, you know, it, I, I could give you another 40 hours. <laughs> well, please, everybody, sign up for my website, and you'll see this this piece finished. Yeah, so the website is katherinemapesturner.com, and uh, you can go there and find uh, her prints and her paintings and lots of other stuff. You can sign up for her newsletter, right? Yep. I'd well, love to stay uh, in touch with everyone. Thumbs up and applause. This was absolutely fabulous. It's it's nice to see this. You know, we have had we've had Joanne Mangion painting uh, dogs, but we haven't had anybody painting an animal. So that's a first. And this is also a first painting uh, oil in kind of a watercolor style. So that's a first. And e every day we're learning something new. So Catherine, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me, Eric. Have a we, wonderful uh, day, everybody. We'll have you back someday. And, and of course, you can post the finished painting in the comments tonight or tomorrow, whenever you want to, people. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'll keep right, painting great. today. And I'll all be thinking right. of all of you. Thanks Thank again. Thank you very much. All right. Our guest with Catherine Mapes Turner. And uh, what a fabulous experience it is to watch. I got something in the mail uh, yesterday. Uh, this big package arrived. And, and this is what I got. It's a, a painting by Patty Watwood. It's inscribed on the back, and and basically uh, it's called Gone Bananas, and it's from Realism Live 2020. It was on the last day when I put on the the uh, crazy hat and post. A lot of people did paintings, so thank you, Patty. That's kind of fun to have around. A, a nice memory of Realism Live. We're going to be doing uh, watercolor live, and it's going to be phenomenal. We have really some great plans with the great watercolors of our time and it's going to be four days including a beginner day that's optional if you're a brand new beginner even if you don't do the other four days do the beginner day it's not very much money and it's a great chance to see top top people teaching and then of course if you can sign up for the whole thing do it you won't regret it there are different replays and so if you have work uh, if you're if you're able to work and you're able to go to work and and you have to or you're working at home and you can't watch, just pick the uh, one of the replay uh, segments and so you can you can watch it later. A lot of people have done that. A lot of people have been coming back and asking us to sell them the replays uh, because they ran out of time because they didn't watch it enough or they wanted to watch it more and more times. And so that's a possibility. Just go to watercolorlive.com and check that out. Uh, I want to remind you guys that today at 3 p.m., our video segment will be with John Potoshnik, Unlimited Color and the Limited Palette. That's 3 p.m. on YouTube or Facebook. Just search Streamline Art Video. And, and John's going to talk about, he's got his book, uh, Limited Palette, Unlimited Color, and he's going to show uh, some of the samples. It's basically like a mood book. Uh, you know, you flip through here and it shows all these different moods. And then he tells you how to accomplish it with just three colors. It's pretty cool. I actually have it out here. And if I'm looking to uh, create a particular mood, I'll flip through it and I'll say, okay, this is how I do it. It's kind of kind of nice. John also has this other video out called Limited Palette Landscape. So you'll get to see this today uh, at 3 p.m. So don't miss it. Thank you for tuning in. I'm here every day at 12 noon and love doing this for you. And also every day at 3 p.m. And uh Looks like, uh, you know, we were originally going to do this for two weeks at the beginning of coronavirus. Today is day 237. Uh, I've been at this for months and months and months and months, and we'll keep it going. Uh, so uh, give us your comments. Give us your feedback. Tell us who, who you would like to have. Send me notes. I love hearing from everybody. Love the fact that we have people from all over the world becoming part of an artist community. The best possible thing anyone can do is to subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on Facebook or follow on Facebook or Instagram, or whatever you're watching on, but also to share. Because when you share, <clears throat> excuse me, other people are discovering art. And there are people, we're hearing from literally hundreds of people, 
people who said, I haven't picked up an easel in 30 years or a paintbrush. <laughs> you don't pick up your easel. Uh, I haven't picked up a paintbrush in 30 years. I have people who have picked up a paintbrush for the first time that they have been inspired and they're going out and buying the art supplies. <clears throat> so there's lots of different options. Uh, and when you share, you never know who of your friends are going to start painting. I've had a lot of friends from some of my other uh, other friendships outside of art who are picking up art and who are starting to paint because they stumbled into this. And so I hope that you'll do the same thing. All these artists are inspiring. I, I would appreciate it if you give them uh, positive feedback, give them notes, leave comments, visit their websites, uh, because everybody during this period of time, you, me, them, we all need a little extra boost because these are strange times. And of course, some states are going back in or record. Uh, 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 some states haven't come out. Some states are going back in. Some states are on the fence about it. And, and so the whole goal of this every day for 237 days is to keep you preoccupied, thinking about art, having fun, doing something that you love, and keeping your head out of all the other craziness of 2020. Well, thank you again for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. And I'll see you tomorrow at 12 noon, God willing. We'll see you. Bye-bye.